The trees in the garden were trimmed as in Versailles, following the fashion of the time. And then marble statues appeared in the summer garden, mainly Italian ones depicting ancient Roman emperors and generals, allegories of the seasons and human temperaments. Peter aimed to fill his summer garden with sculptures that would be instructive. He even wanted to install fountains with sculptures inspired by Aesop's fables, each with a sign explaining the moral of the tale. Peter wanted visitors to his garden to know who those people were whom the Italian sculptors had depicted so splendidly, and what made the marble inhabitants of the summer garden laugh or cry. In this old engraving we have a good view of the water tower that once supplied the fountains of the summer garden. We can also see the grotto, a unique edifice right on the bank of the river that has not survived down to the present. The grotto was adorned with sculptures, but its chief attraction was a water organ that Peter had brought from abroad. In the first quarter of the 18th century, the summer garden was one of the centres of social and political life in St. Petersburg. Locals and visitors knew that if the Emperor's standard was raised on the bastion of the Peter and Paul fortress, an assembly was to be held in the summer garden. At five in the evening, cannon roared out, and as the last shot died away, the guests entered the garden through the main entrance on the Neva side. The garden then ran right down to the river. The guests entered its central alley. The chief adornment of this main access of the summer garden was a statue of the beautiful classical goddess Venus. Later it became known as the Taurida Venus and can be seen now in the Hermitage. Today's summer garden bears little resemblance, of course, to that of Peter's day. There are no fountains, no lakes with pergolas, no aviaries and no fruit trees. At one time, the garden contained 250 sculptures. Less than half now remain. Most of the others perished in the flood of 1777. After Peter's death, the gardeners stopped trimming the trees in the French manner. Gradually, the summer garden acquired different features. By the 19th century, it had become simply a place for people to spend their leisure hours. But on the other hand, it had begun a new chapter in its history. The summer garden has been extolled in poetry and prose, in music and in painting. In it, one can catch glimpses of the shades of various literary characters and hear melodies from past centuries. The summer garden is associated with Tchaikovsky, Anna Akhmatova, Mandelstam and many others. It was famously described by Pushkin in his celebrated poem, Eugene Onegin. In the almost 300 years of its existence, the summer garden has become encrusted with legends. 
One of them claims that a certain Englishman made a special journey by ship from his homeland just to see the railings of the summer garden, of whose beauty he had heard. After looking at them, he immediately sailed away, saying that he could not hope to see anything more beautiful. Another story states that in the 1920s, the Americans offered a Russia devastated by revolution and civil war, 100 steamships for the railings of the summer garden. But the offer was turned down because they are simply priceless. No, St. Petersburg shall never be laid waste because the city continues to live, to preserve its past and to build more. And new generations of artists strive, like their precursors, to capture its appearance on canvas and paper. Recently, the city recovered its historical name, St. Petersburg. The future of the city, like its name, is connected with heaven and heaven protects it. <laughs>